Hello traders, Bob with CurrencyWaves.com. We're going to take a look at the awesome oscillator and some good trade setups from the uh, oscillator. If you're new to the uh, CurrencyWaves videos or CurrencyWaves.com at all, you can follow me on Twitter here by clicking the follow me at Twitter or it's at CurrencyWaves. I always use MotiveWave charts. You can click that link, get yourself a 14-day free trial. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel here. If you like what you see in the video, there is the like button. I don't know where the dislike is, but it's there. Well, here it is. Or, and you can also share them. You can embed them in your website or blog, email them, share them on Facebook, Twitter, and a number of different sites. Pretty simple to do. So, like I say, if you like it, pass it along. And before we begin, please take a moment to read the trade risk disclaimer. Everybody needs to know that trading Forex or any high leverage market is risky and you could lose some if not all of your money so keep that in mind was your trading okay the bill williams awesome oscillator we'll take a look at how it's made up and then we'll take a look at some trade setups we'll look at the saucer the zero line cross and the twin peaks The awesome oscillator determines the market momentum at any given time by comparing the momentum of the last five bars to the momentum of the last 34 bars. The awesome oscillator is simply the difference between a 34 period and a five period simple moving averages. The simple moving averages are ca excuse me, calculated using the midpoint of the bars, not the close, the high, the low, but the midpoint, which is the high plus the low divided by two. The awesome oscillator is displayed as a histogram on the charts. So here we have a four hour chart of the Euro US dollar with the awesome oscillator. One thing I wanna point out is this is the same thing as the Elliott Wave Oscillator. So if you have a software program, or charting software that has the Elliott Wave Oscillator but not the Awesome Oscillator, same thing. You could also use a MACD histogram if you can set it to midpoint, you know, the 34, 5, simple moving average at midpoint. So here on the charts, I have plotted the simple moving average, five period simple moving average, five bars at midpoint, and the 34 period simple moving average at midpoint. And you can see here, as the moving the five period moving average closes below the 34 we cross the zero line as it pulls away from the 34 we see a bunch of red bars on the histogram as it moves closer to the 34 if, if as the five period moving average clo moves closer to the 34 we see green bars and as it crosses back above as the five period closes back above the 34, that's where we get the zero line cross. This would be the zero line cross up, obviously, and this is down. Okay. So that's basically how the uh, awesome oscillator histogram is made up. And now we'll take a look at some of the saucer setups. and how we trade those. Okay, here we have a nice down move going on here. Then we 
to get a green bar because the five period moving average is moving closer to the 34. We get three of those followed by a red bar because it's moving closer or further away, sorry, from the 34. So what I like to do is this first red bar following the green bars the low of that candle that's that's your setup candle and I like to enter on a close below that candle like it did here but when you have a red bar and you're not triggered and then all of a sudden the green bar comes up again this setup is canceled then you would go wait for the next red bar which happens right here Here's the low, but again, it's canceled because you it's followed by a bunch of green bars before it's triggered, before you actually get the close. So now you have another red bar on this one, and you're finally triggered with the close below this bar. Okay. I like to put my stop at the latest swing high. Okay. And here is our entry is right here at about 38.88. And I like to go for a one-to-one -one target right off the bat, get half my uh, risk off the table, and then see where it goes from there. So here's our entry, here's our stop. So our risk is 260 pips, 262 pips, whatever. <coughs> and we are off that. We get out of that trade on this bar. So about two and a half days, 15 bars on this four hour chart. Then once we get the green bar, then I get out the entire position. So that was a, a profitable trade of 260 pips that took about, what did I say? Um, about 20 hours. Okay. Now we have another one here. We have some red bars trending down. We're below the zero line. We get a bunch of green bars followed by a red bar right here. So this is your trigger bar. This is the first red histogram bar. I wait for a close below that bar, which happened right here. Let's we'll put our stop loss right here. Our entry would actually be 35.95. Let's measure that, see if we got our one to one. Why do I always do that? 205 pips. Oh, very close here, 208 pips. So you would have got your one to one. Then we got a green bar, so you would have gotten out here with another 27 pips. Sometimes it's just better to take it all off at a one to one, but when you get in, unless you know there's a third wave coming up. Okay, and here's a real small. I'm sorry, let's go back. To, okay, there's one here. Let's go back to this one. We got green, red, green. Here's a red bar. Your first red bar doesn't happen. 
you know, close below here doesn't happen. Okay, you got a green and you got red again. Again, it doesn't close below this bar, so you don't get in. Then you're green. Now you're on the above the zero line. You got some green, three red, another green on this bar. You get no entry there. And we'll talk about this zero line cross later. Another example. You got green, you got three red here. Here's your entry. Trigger candle. We'll get a close above it. So we're in at about 3584. Stop. The latest swing low. Let's measure that quick. About 220 pips stop. And you're out and over right here for your 220 pips. Then if you decide to let it run. Depends on how long you want to hold, you could actually get out. Oh, so there's uh, 650 pips up there. Okay, and now we have another one here. your entry actually close above this candle doesn't happen before we go red again so now you got another green so this this one is canceled here you have another green it would have been triggered here and stopped out now Let's measure that quick. Here's your entry your stop would have been here. See the loss 177 pips. Something to look at here is this last bar had divergence. So if you know anything about Elliott Wave, you could go with a one, two, one, two, three, four, five, another four and a five. So I probably would not have entered that just simply because of the fact that there was divergence before it. And this is also known as the twin, one of the twin peaks, one of the trade setups. Okay. Here's another one here. Training up. Got a red bar. And you've got a green bar. You need to close above this bar. Doesn't happen before we get another red bar. So that was followed by a green bar. Again, you need to close above here. It doesn't happen. So this really keeps you out of the chop. And you've got a bunch of red bars followed by a green. Which you need to close above on this. But guess what? We're followed by red bars again. So finally, you have a green bar here. Here's your close. So you get triggered on this one. Hundred ninety seven pips stop, two hundred and fifty pips swing high. So you should be good to go on that one. All right. I hope everybody understands what the uh, saucer is here. And we'll take a look at the next setup. 
And the next one we want to take a look at is the zero line cross. The zero line cross is simply just the histogram crossing above the zero line. Okay. And that is crossing above or below the zero line, not just above. I should clarify that. Okay, so here's a cross up right here. Here's the bar. No trade. Wait for close above the high of the crossing bar. Okay, here's a cross down. No trade. Well, I'm sorry, there is here. This does not go back up. I was going to say, if, if it jumps back and forth above and below the zero line, then each time it does, it cancels it out. You know, so this was a short trade setup because of the zero line cross down and it crossed back above the zero line. Then you'd have to look for a long because you're above the zero line. So it does not do that. So you actually are short on the close here. of this bar at 34.24. Now you could put your stop right up above this candle high of that candle or go all the way up. I prefer to go all the way up to 220 up to this high, which is 230 pips. You got 386 pips down. So you're basically your one to one on this candle. And if you let it ride, there's a long ways down. Okay, so here's another zero line cross up. You get triggered and you're stopped out. For 138 pips. And then you get across down and here's some of that whipsaw back and forth I was talking about. But you can obviously see there's nothing here. This must have been maybe a Sunday or you know, it looks like a Sunday night where nothing really happens. And then you get a nice drop. close below here, which we get on this bar. So here's our entry, here's our stop with the latest swing high. Hi, I'll get grab that bar. So you got 298 pips. Let's try that again. Don't quite get it there. In the meantime, in between here, you can see you had a zero line cross up, was not triggered, and another zero line cross down, which would have been here. This is your trigger candle. This is the one that crossed below the zero line with a histogram cross below. And you could have actually, I guess, got in on this bar, this little tiny thing here with the stop up here. Hundred and fifty two pips. You actually could almost got a two to one if you would have held on through this mess, but you would have gotten your one to one right here. And also you have 
in the down tread you have a green bar and then it goes to red right away I kind of like to wait I don't know if I show that on the uh, saucer but wait for a couple of green bars rather than just going with one and the other thing about those saucers I wanted to mention is they work best closer to the zero line because this if you're Elliott wave you know like here you have something like a one two maybe a one two one two three or this is probably a three four I'll be a one two three again but anyway back to the uh, zero line crosses got sidetracked there there's one like I say there's one here that doesn't get triggered Yeah, it'd have been real close there. You could have gotten in and you would have been stopped out. 177 pips. Then you got to cross down. We're getting up close below here. We do here, I guess. Sometimes it's better to wait for the close below the swing low rather than that bar, especially when they're small like this. But okay, then we get a zero line cross up right here. Again, here's one of those tiny bars. But you would have had a 125 pip stop, 570 pips up. Another zero line cross here, which does not get triggered. Zero line cross up, which does not get triggered before we get another down, and then we get some slot back and forth. It doesn't look like anything was triggered here. Close below this low. Yeah, just barely. Put a cross back up, gets triggered. here then you would have been stopped out on that one zero line cross down would have been triggered probably this bar stopped at high you would have gotten your two to one again 175 168 uh, would have been real close there and another cross so we probably would have waited for a close here stop would have been 221 you've gotten your 221 another cross here so looks like we would have gotten in on this candle Hundred and eighty one pip stop 191 down, cross up here, no trigger, cross down here, would have just gotten triggered, in here, 181 up, 105 down, which we probably would have been at a break even by then. Okay, here's another one. Close up. Do a switch here quick. Getting into some more choppiness here. Okay, here's the close up. Here's the bar. The, the close up the uh, crossover. So we're probably looking for this high. 183 pip stop. Could have gotten out. Yeah, right out of this bar. And in between, of course, we got saucers and all that, but we're looking at the cross down. Here's a cross down. Trigger here on this close. 178 pips. Probably eh, might have got stopped out on a break even there. If you, if I, you know, if you're down a, up 100 pips, going with a break even stop is probably not a bad idea. 
All right, so that's the, uh, I hope I gave you enough examples of the cross. The, uh, and then the Twin Peaks, I think everybody knows what divergence is, and that's basically what the Twin Peaks is, is the divergence. So we'll do that quick. It's been about 25 minutes already. So Okay, like I said, the uh, Twin Peaks is basically divergence. So we have a lower RSI, or uh, alley wave oscillator, awesome oscillator, and then a higher awesome oscillator here with a lower close. So what we're looking for is the first green bar and a close above the candle. The trigger candle does not happen. It continues down. And here we have low RSI. And we start to see some divergence here. We got some lower close here. We have a lower close here. We have, okay. So then here's your first green bar after all that divergence is right here. It's actually this little candle here. We get the close above it. So in this case, you would have had you would have gotten in here yeah, about a 63 pip stop. Would have been out of that one pretty early. See if we can find some more Twin Peaks here. Divergence quick. Okay, here we go. Here's, let's just do this one right here. We have low in the Elliott Wave Oscillator or the Awesome Oscillator. Here's a lower closing low. So we wait for a bar close above this bar. Doesn't happen. Before we get more red, here we have another green, so we're looking for a close above this bar, which happens right here. So if we measure that, this is the close, 204. It would have taken a little bit to get that one out, but through all this choppiness, in the meantime, we would have had a cross below, but no trigger. Oops, sorry, we're doing Twin Peaks now. Okay, um, here's some more here. We just continue the R or the Elliot Awesome Oscillator. Continues to rise as price falls. Let's just go with this last one right here. A close above here. Get a real small stop. Yeah, you might have been stopped out on that. Just depending on your broker, that would have been a real close one there. There's another one here. You have a lower awesome oscillator. Then a higher awesome oscillator with lower closes first green bar you got triggered on this you would have had a nice easy risk reward there this is more of a double top but same thing you want to look for the first close below the bar that created this down you go now we're starting to see some real divergence here. But, all right, been 30 minutes. I hope uh, you understand what I was talking about there. hope it's helpful. If it is, please feel free to pass it along. And have a good day.